The NSA uh, basically gave a, a been giving. It's been coming out what they do. They say it's not too. They, they don't take too much information. It's not as big as the leaks have been saying. They don't do a broad search. They don't take all this metadata. They don't you know search Americans. Um, they don't collect this information on, Ameri on Americans. But as more information comes out, it turns out they're not really telling the truth. Not surprising at all, but this is a bit interesting here. Um, Chris Inglis, the agency's deputy director, uh, was one of several government representatives, including from the FBI and uh, the Office of the Director of National Intelligence, who testified uh, uh, before the House Judiciary Committee uh, last week, uh, July 17th. And uh, while his testimony large, largely discussed previous uh, uh, testimonies that were already given, uh, basically what we know about examples of how the Patriot Act and the, uh, the uh, FISA Act has stopped terror events, you know, even though they don't really provide very much proof behind that. Um, and Wyden and Udall said they were being misleading yes, about exactly. that. And Wyden and Udall said, we can't go on the record <laughs> because we will break, uh, you know, secrecy, but please stop being dishonest. I mean, so other than the, the, the regurgitation of things they've already been giving us, uh, this little bit came out that sort of gives us an indication that the NSA is looking at data that's, that's in a much more wider universe than what they've previously said. Uh, what he said was, this Chris Inglis uh, deputy director said, analysts look at two or three hops from terror suspects when evaluating terror activity. Now, let me, let me explain what this means. Two or three hops. So what they're saying is they could collect the metadata of a terror suspect. And from this terror suspect, they could collect the metadata of whoever they've called. So that's one hop. And then they could collect the metadata of whoever that person called. That's two hops. And then they could collect the metadata of whoever that person called. That's three hops. So to make this a bit more clear here, let's say you're on Facebook uh, and, you have, and you're friends with someone. That's one hop. The NSA will look at your friend's friends. Two hops. And then they will look at your friend's friend's friends. That's three hops. Wait a minute here. Let me explain. Everyone's connected in some way. Don't forget that. Researchers at the University of Milan found that in 2011, everyone on the internet, in the entire internet using world, was on average 4.74 steps or hops away from anybody else. There's like four degrees of Bin Laden instead of five degrees of bacon. Yes. And let's, let's, let's assume that you know, they say they only search non-Americans. They only collect metadata from non-Americans. And being that America is the predominant country on the Internet. And this research found that 4.74 steps away was everybody on the Internet. You could pretty much assume that they could really, two or three hops will eventually get them to Anybody and everybody. And I think that's this, pretty broad. That's incredibly broad. And this is another great example of how the NSA, throughout the whole course of this crisis, they've used things like, well, we have all these examples of plots we foiled. We can't really tell you about one of them, but here are one or two, and it's questionable what role we actually played in foiling them using this type of metadata. And then you use these terminologies like, well, we have this very disaggregated and sensitive hops program. And if you're one degree connected from blah, 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 then you won't. And they use this, you know, this very kind of elaborate managerial language to say, look, if, if the program plays out literally as they're telling you, it's exactly what Matt is saying. It's tracking very small degrees on the internet.